Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today to talk about getting down to business with business endorsements. It's really my pleasure to be with you all today. Um, I hope you're enjoying the conference. We couldn't do it without such passionate and driven volunteers. It is my hope that in today's uh, event, we can provide a lot of great information. Um, so to kick it off, my name is Kyle Kameen. I am CCL's Senior Business Relations Representative, and I'm based in Washington, D.C., and a part of our government affairs team. My role is focused on building business and industry support for carbon pricing and EICDA. While I focus on that at the national level, it's imperative that wonderful volunteers like my guests today, Steffi Rausch and Alex Amonette, continue to do the amazing work that they're doing to build small and medium-sized business support in their communities and with their chambers. So without further ado, I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves and we're gonna jump right into the content. So Steffi? Yeah, hi. So I've been with CCL for now seven years. I do lead the Asheville uh, chapter in North Carolina. I also co-lead the uh, brewery effort nationwide and uh, the Grass Tops Engagement Action Team for CCL. Thanks so much, Steffi. And Alex? Hi, I volunteered with CCL since 2013. I'm a businesswoman, a member of the Chamber of Commerce, my local chamber, and I'm a CCL liaison to one of our senators, and I love my state. Well, you do have a great state. They're all great, but you have a great state. So uh, thank you both for joining me today. I think that uh, you're going to really provide some wonderful insight to those listening. Um, so I'm going to jump right into question one. You know, you are both incredible CCLers who choose to tackle a really tough topic, and that's building business industry support for carbon pricing policy. So why can't why don't you tell our audience a little bit about what inspired your interest and what you got involved and how you got involved? Um, and hopefully that'll give those that are listening and interested some some idea of how to engage. So Steffi, could could you share, please? Sure. So I lived in Montana through drought and lived with a conservative family out there that were big into the hunting and fishing industry and saw firsthand what it was like um, and moved to Asheville since then where we have lots more water. But now we're getting flooding. Um, so but as a business owner, I felt that, you know, people are more swayed, especially our legislators, by, you know, businesses. And I felt that was the best bang for my buck in getting something done and getting the legislators interested. And I also feel like it's great to practice my talking points because you're actually speaking with the very people that bring up legitimate concerns and you do have to practice and learn how to respond to them and you get better at it as you go. I mean, seven years in and I got it down. Um, but I, so I love it. Um, I love that feeling. And then um, getting endorsements, yeah, uh, having the hard conversations is something that I enjoy. So if it's something you enjoy, it would be something for you to do and learning from the businesses, how they're affected. And so educating yourself and empowering them, learning how to empower people is, is, is really fun for me as well. And doing a lot of presentations too. And that's exactly why we wanted to have you today. You are a pro at this and you can give a lot of valuable insight to those listening. And Alex, could you share as well? Well, thank you. Well, I've been writing blogs and letters to the editor and reaching out to agricultural organizations and also my local chamber of commerce. Uh, I wanted to share a story where I live in the summer of 2016, the Yellowstone River was closed for about two weeks in the summer due to low flows, warming temperatures and a fish killing parasite. And the low flows and warming temperatures can be attributed in part to our changing climate because we had a low snowpack that year. So consequently, the, the shops on Main Street lost businesses uh, because, well, they lost business because uh, as the secretary to the local chamber put it, and she's also the quilt shop owner, uh, she said, you know, when the husbands go fishing, the wives go shopping. So for that period of time, Main Street was dead and there was no guiding or rafting or fishing trips. Um, so here, if we continue to see the impacts from our changing climate, which I'm very much afraid we will, with low snowpack and drought, melting glaciers and wildfires and smoke that are increasing in intensity and duration, our economy that's so dependent upon agricultural and tourism and the health and welfare of the folks here will suffer. 
And that's, you know, both of you made this point and it's so true that, you know, the examples that our, our communities can give to their legislators are really uh, the, how you tell a story to the legislator. And that's why it's so key, the work you all are doing. And so, you know, you've kind of told us a little bit of how you were interested and in how you got engaged. So how did you decide to focus on the local chambers and businesses specifically? What was the, the driver for that? And Alex, can you go ahead and jump in? Sure. Well, first of all, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce recent position on climate really helps advance market-based solutions like the Energy Innovation Act. And if we in my state can get our state chamber to endorse the U.S. Chamber policy, it might help me get my senator to support carbon pricing. Um, so last year, when he ran for re-election, the State Chamber of Commerce and another very important statewide entity came out against carbon taxes. So I thought to myself, well, after the election, we'll see who wins, but what if I can win these two entities' support for carbon pricing? That may help get my senator to be in favor of it and get him the backup support that he needs to step up to the plate. I, I think that's a great point. Um, certainly will will help if, if that happens, and it's a we, we will support you with that work, you know that. Um, Steffi, how about you? So the so I'm uh, focused more on uh, various businesses and I felt like when I dove into it at first, I contacted people I knew for sure. Um, but the, basically when I started looking into my legislators committees and realizing and their caucuses, what they what matters to them then i started really upping my game because then i started realizing that they really only care about certain endorsements so for example the brewery effort just made sense in my case because my congressman McHenry, who was fourth in line in the gop at the time was also one of four co-chairs on the small brewers caucus in the house and then learning more about it i was like half of our congress is in the Small Brewers Caucus in both the Senate and the, and the House. So, and I live in Beer City, USA, Asheville. So I thought, well, you know, I know some brewery owners. I go to the breweries all the time. I started talking to them and learning from them how they're being affected. Although some of them didn't really know how they were affected, but I learned myself and, and then asked them, have you heard about this? Have you experienced this? Have you seen this? and just you know learning from them and so it grew uh, from the brewery endorsement to a nationwide campaign and then i started getting others involved like i started focusing on the construction uh group um you know wineries and coffee and all kinds of various um industries that mattered to my legislators we're up to 150 endorsements in my chamber in my chapter right now and then the breweries actually helped us reach out to our local asheville chamber because they're very embedded with them and actually we wrote a letter and found that we have 26 endorsers who are chamber members and one of the brewery owners that's very well known with chamber was given a prize one year actually signed the letter and submitted it for us. Um, and that got their attention. And we had our second presentation after three years. We had one three years ago, which went nowhere. This time we got our second presentation. And from that second presentation, they drafted a statement very similar to the US Chamber, which actually says that they now support market-based approaches um, and also wanted to avoid economic harm to businesses, consumers, and disadvantaged communities. So, you know, yeah. that was amazing for us. They don't endorse the Energy Innovation Act, but for them to make a statement like that after three years later, um, right. the help of breweries was was phenomenal. Well, and it's and you, it's, you make the, a great point that first of all, that's just amazing work, and you make the great point that you know it's it's progress, it's a step forward, and now you can continue to engage with them and see how that engagement moves forward. But what a great opportunity to to get them to make a statement that was, um, you know, a positive statement. Um, and so this is you talked about this a little bit in, in the the discussion you were just having. Um, you know, once you decided to engage the chambers and businesses, um, how, how did you go up go about that engagement and relationship building, Steffi? Yeah, so I would definitely say be strategic, like I mentioned, and track your prospects via spreadsheets. So find out what committees, caucuses matter to your legislators, and then create a spreadsheet um, and and uh, track who's contacting which businesses. Um, 
and uh, and make notes of when you talk to them, how often you've reached out, so you don't reach out too much. You know, try to circle back maybe months later if nothing happened from it. If there's something new that come up in the news regarding their industry, bring that up. Um, and then you know, always um, and then categorize those endorsements when you do get them, because when the legislator, um, the staffer sees the all these lists of endorsements and they read through a bunch. They like to when they see the 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 categories of them, it really helps, and they've actually thanked yep. me for putting together them in categories of their industry. Also, do your research. Um, so contact an action team for for resources. Uh, do a community search. You know, on CCL community, do a Google search in the industry or your business or the person you're talking to. Then email them. Follow up with a phone call. For hope just to talk to him for five minutes if you can drop by their business to try and meet with them if you can and ask for a further phone call or virtual meeting or in-person meeting or pre presentation to their board or members and also mention other endorsers in the industry that have already endorsed that helps too um and to and maybe if you have a winner of an industry have that winner contact their peers if they know like we have a really well-known builder here that decided to write a letter to all his peers because he's very well known and they look up to him and he was able to get 20 other carpet you know uh construction um companies to sign and um and then get a meeting then once you get so many of them then you get a meeting with the legislator with them so focus on the fact that this is happening around the world and those who move the fastest will benefit the most and those who move the slowest will lose out that's another big thing for them as well yeah and that's been a, a piece that danny's been talking about on the international level as well and and alex i know we've been uh you know, you and I have been discussing a lot the the efforts that are happening in Montana. So why don't you share a little bit about about that? Okay. Well, I wanted to share how I reach out to a chamber that I don't know anybody. So I know my local chamber, but I don't know like there's a huge city. I want to reach out to that chamber. So the other day, um, I looked at their website and I said to myself, okay, what companies might I know on this website? And I found a company that I very much admired. So I just wrote an email to their CEO and it said, dear person. I hope this email finds you doing very well. I'm a member of my local chamber of commerce and I volunteer with Citizens Climate Lobby and I provided a link. And then I said, would you have time to chat about the U.S. Chamber's recent position on climate? And I provided a link to that. I'm very excited about it. I wanted to see if I could talk with the appropriate person in your chamber about it. I seek your help in connecting with whomever that may be and thank you for considering this request. And I was so excited because I got a response within a day. The nice person wrote me back and said, sure, midweek, next week would be good. This looks like a very interesting position. So I also wanted to just briefly share a backstory. So once I decided, okay, I'm gonna contact Chambers after that January election, I reached out to Kyle. And uh, we had a great week meeting with two other volunteers in my state, one of whom is our state CCL co-leader. And we decided to be very coordinated in how we were going to reach out to other businesses. So there are 79 uh, chambers of commerce in my state we got some additional volunteers who have joined us. And um, one of those volunteers has been in a chamber for many years and provides great insights. So we decided which ones of those 79s we were gonna contact and we got to work. And I just wanted to briefly share some advice from one of the volunteers. As Steffi said, it helps if you're already active in the community so that people know you aren't contacting them for just purely selfish reasons. Um, you care about your community. Uh, make a connection to the values of the chamber, so see their mission statement, find out their interests and whom you may know, and be sensitive to their times, time and needs. Um, Kyle and I and two other volunteers had a telephone, no, a Zoom meeting with my local chamber's director who contacted his boss, and this is this was so wonderful. His boss turns out to be this, the CEO of one of Montana's largest internet and telephone providers, which happens to be my internet phone provider. And so when we got on a Zoom call with those folks, I was very appreciative because I, you know, I'd be looking at, you know, I wouldn't be able to do my business without that company. And we really had a great conversation. Kyle is great at breaking the ice in these conversations. So I would loop <laughs> him in. And <laughs> the CEO said he has his grandchildren that he cares about very much. He wants them to have a safe climate. So I am sure we're going to be having further discussions with them. 
and I look forward to it. Um, so th that was really great. Thank you both. And, and, you know, the next kind of phase here, having established those contacts or relationships and secured a meeting, how do you usually structure that meeting and what is your goal? Um, obviously, you know, in a lot of cases, the first meeting is unlikely to lead to an outright endorsement. And so when you know that, what, what kind of alternative do you establish as your goal? Yeah, so when you get the meeting scheduled, I definitely have a planning meeting with whoever's going to, to attend and to create an agenda. And I actually do label who's going to be speaking when um, and give them those talking points so they can prepare, right? Be prepared. But we also want it to be off the cuff, too, and be a little bit creative. Um, first of all, look into their industry, be, do your research, due diligence, um, and start up by start out by asking them questions, asking them how they're affected, get them talking first. Um, and if they're not ready for an endorsement after the talk is done, after the meeting is done, you know, try meeting again, following up with recent changes like the chamber, like that happened because they came out with a recent statement and I felt it was time to reach back yeah. out. Um, you know, so that took three years. Um, an NC insurance commissioner meeting I've had recently with, which he is nowhere near endorsing, but I've had five meetings with him and he keeps meeting with us. And I keep bringing in new people like Scott Nystrom, who wrote the Remy report, came yeah. into a meeting. We got Bill Inglis in the next meeting. Like he loves meeting with us. I don't know what will come of it, but it seems to be going somewhere. Um, also, if they don't want to endorse that, you can ask them to sign a more general statement, like a declaration from BCL. And after the endorsement, I encourage you to have them go public. That's really important. Yes. Um, and it's really hard for some reason to get them to do so. But, you know, just asking them what they're willing to do is the best way. They can do an LTE, an op-ed. You could write it for them. So you can co-write it with them. Um, you can do a presentation to their club or organization or members. You ha can have them write a letter to the legislator or meet with you in the lobby meetings, which is the best. And the video testimonial tool is wonderful. But I find that a lot of people have a hard time being put on camera or making a social yeah. media post about it. We, we have found that you're absolutely right, but but it is imperative, like all that work that you're laying out, it's it's so important to, to get them to make the statements as public as they can and to continue to engage in the process beyond just the endorsement because the endorsement is wonderful, but then we need them to, to use that in a productive way beyond that for us and how they can. And, and Alex, what, what do you have to share on, on that? Well, I uh, recommend that you set up an online meeting or a telephone conversation. And if it's not a risk to your house, of course, meet with them in person. But our goals when we go out to meet with them are, one, could they, could you tell them about the U.S. Chamber's position on climate and ask them, you know, what they think about it? Then two, inform them about the market-based solution that's the Energy Innovation Act and ask them mm -hmm. what they think about carbon pricing. Have they heard that term? Because a lot of folks haven't. What do they think about that? Three, ask them if they would consider writing a letter to the State Chamber of Commerce, expressing their support for the U.S. Chamber's position. And finally, you know, if you can get them to endorse the Energy Innovation Act, and some chambers cannot, uh, but the larger ones in your state can, so you have to find out who those are, and your state chamber can certainly endorse a bill. Uh, go for that. And that's a great point because I think, you know, one way to think about local chambers versus state chambers is to think about the local chambers kind of as a constituent of the state chamber, similar to we are constituents to our legislators, right? And so for them to hear that from the entities that they ostensibly represent, whether or not there's a direct affiliation, can really, um, you know, help them start thinking about how they need to uh, address these policies. Um, so thank you. That, that, was, that was great. Um, you know, so now that you've had the meeting, you know, you're, you've got the plan, everything. What are the resources, you know, that you recommend to our volunteers that will help them have a successful and informative meeting? Alex, do you have a couple? Yeah, um, definitely. Well, first of all, I want to say that your resources, your best resources are your colleagues in CCL and each other. And um, I routinely will, you know, call friends in CCL, like my friend George in Missouri. Um, Pete Marsh and Stephanie provided me with PowerPoint slide decks, and I combined them to make a state-centric PowerPoint. And Stephanie can uh, provide the links to these resources. Um, also, we provide them with a link to the U.S. Chamber's position on climate. And there's a great letter to the chamber that I think Steffi has on the um, Grass Tops website that you can borrow and make your own. And then I just wanted to highlight this um, handout that you know, you've probably all seen. This is a really great, great one to hand out to chambers. It's the business statements 
in support of carbon pricing. So I would definitely share that with folks. Thanks, Alex. And Steffi, how about you? Yeah, so I'm going to share, and I put into the chat a link to our Grasshops Engagement Action Team um, page where all these resources are, as well as business climate leaders, which we sometimes work with. I'm going to share my screen now to show you um, the uh, page on the Grasshops Engagement Action Team. And below here where it says more info, we have our past uh, webinars. So if you want to learn about how to get brewery endorsements or uh, a mayor or a Catholic colleges or state level legislator endorsements, healthcare, insurance, labor outreach, economist support, et cetera, all of it is listed here. And we just do a search on this page. And as you can see, we link to not only the video of that presentation, but also the resources, for example, or a PowerPoint in some cases, or an email to the chamber, or a presentation, which I've linked to here. So um, I don't know if you can see these other tabs um, that I have up, probably not, because I just shared one tab. But there, are, yeah, you can link to those there. So I'll stop sharing again. And yeah, just do your research online or contact another action team to ask for more resources, et cetera, or do a search on community. Thanks, Steffi. That's that's super helpful. And I know that you all have spent a lot of time on the on the Grasshops engagement team building those resources with with Todd and, and other CCLers. Um, so so thank you for all that work. Um, so, you know, that being said, you've, you've kind of talked through the meetings and everything. Can, can you two share some stories of uh, success from all of your work building, you know, support for carbon pricing and EICDA? I know we've touched on a little bit of it, but uh, Steffi, do you have a couple you could share? Yeah, definitely. I feel, gosh, seven years has been a whirlwind, but when you think upon your successes, it makes me smile. Like our brewery lobby meeting in, in district was the best meeting we ever had, even though it was during beer week and not many could attend, <laughs> I did show up. And even though he really wanted more, but I was like, well, it's beer week. I mean, what are we going to do? So they, by far from it coming from the business owners themselves, it was more, he listened more. It had, we had a full hour. We were not in it, you know, during lobby week, sometimes we're in DC. He doesn't have enough time. It's only 15 minutes or so. This was a full hour. There was food. He listened to them. I let them talk. It was their meeting. We had planned for it and it was by far the best and he had one of the best um responses at the end the other was like a big event at a brewery where i worked with rick Devereaux, who he got involved because of me trying to pull him into this um for the burden film that we showcased there where we got basically a hundred you know military people retired military to show up and then a hundred environmentalists came and they all had beers at this brewery and watched a film called the burden um, also, you know, the, the construction builder that helped reach out to other construction companies was great. I had a meeting with Farm Bureau th through a farmer that got me that meeting. Um, Trout Unlimited and Seed Trout Unlimited mm -hmm. um, has been great to work with us. Uh, we've had several meetings with them. Getting our city council on board was an exciting thing as well. But the ones I've had the hardest time getting involved were, were schools and colleges. I don't know why. And then farmers is definitely the hardest most time intensive um, ones to get uh, work with. So, but you'll meet people along the way and it'll naturally pull you in the right direction and those will help you meet others. It's just amazing how it works and just go with it. And I think one of the themes that I'm hearing as well is, is there's a lot of creativity in the outreach and, and events and meetings about how you can connect with people. And um, I think that's imperative and it seems like you're doing an excellent job of that. And Alex, how about you? What, what kind of stories of success do you have? Well, um, I have one newspaper in another city where I used to live that seven years ago I approached and asked the editorial board to endorse you know, the citizens climate lobby. At the time, it was the carbon fee and dividend. And last year they finally did, but I, I wasn't living there then. So that's a su personal success. But um, every conversation is actually a success because as one volunteer has pointed out, this is one more person who now knows about these solutions and policies. Yes. And our state co-lead has worked for two years with other volunteers. And she recently obtained a municipal endorsement for the Energy Innovation Act from her town, which is a very popular skiing and tourist town. 
Um, other people in CCL in Montana have obtained 20 or more endorsements from prominent individuals, organizations, and businesses. And as Steffi mentioned, you use these endorsements when you speak with folks. Yes. Um, and the other thing is find out what is your state exporting and importing and how does that affect uh, their business? Because if our nation does not go have a carbon tax with a border carbon adjustment, that's going to affect business. And uh, that informs your next conversation with folks and your lobbying efforts that you can share with your liaison. That's an excellent point. Um, absolutely, that is imperative research, I agree. It really helps inform uh, how your outreach and your plan is gonna look. And I think you make a great point that you know each conversation is important um, and we should, I, I know I certainly value each one that you know our volunteers bring me into. And um, yeah, every see that's how CCL was built, I think, conversations and, and relationships. So um, thank you both for that. And, and you know, to kind of wrap that piece up, you know, what is the best advice for our volunteers listening that are thinking about pursuing endorsements like those we've discussed and maybe a little bit about what's next for your plans. And Alex, if you wanna jump into that one. Sure, well, we plan to keep networking and find folks with whom to connect. The Chamber's position on climate, which I urge you all to read, it's really great. It says, inaction is not an option. So we have to follow that advice. And if you're not a chamber member, no problem. Do you have a favorite business in your town? Is it the bakery? Go down to the bakery, talk to the baker, ask him if he's a member of the chamber, and can he introduce you to the chamber directors so that you can share with them the chamber's position and the Energy Innovation Act. Um, I really feel that the U.S. Chamber's position is a gift in our efforts to get carbon pricing and enact the bill. Uh, personally, I plan to reach out to five chambers between now and November and get their endorsements. And personal advice is don't despair. I know we can all fall into that, but it really stops you from thinking and being creative. So, you know, be patient with yourself, be patient with people, persistent and practical, and giving up is not an option. I plan to have a lot of fun with my colleagues because I really enjoy them. I enjoy this outreach effort. And my fellow volunteers in Montana are just incredible people. They care very deeply about this state. And it's really my honor and a pleasure to work with them. So that's my pleasure. Well, that's, that's so nice to hear. And it's, you know, my time with CCL has only been for the last seven months, right? And yet um, that is a story that I hear again and again about how much our volunteers uh, love each other and love working with one another. And it's just a, a shared mission. So I, I'm really glad to hear that. And Steffi, how about, how about you? I know we we have three more minutes before we close. So I'm yeah. just going to say, be strategic about your endorsements. The one thing I wish I could have done better uh, was getting more businesses involved in the lobby meetings and talking to their legislators, um, but also learn a lot about motivational interviewing skills and asking the right questions and having a good conversation is important. Thanks. Great. Um, so I'm going to jump into the first uh, audience question here, and Alex actually just answered it. So I'm going to recap that answer and then move to the next one and hand it off to you too. Um, so the question is, I've tried to reach out to chambers and not gotten any response, and that seems the only one uh, they only want to talk and hear from members of the chamber. Does that sound right? And what do you recommend? And Alex just outlined this, and I think it's it's right on. And Steffi talked a little bit about this earlier as well. Yes, if you can find a business that um, is a member of the chamber that you have a relationship with or that is already endorsed or interested in endorsing, absolutely um, you know, ask them to be your point of contact with the chamber because they have that relationship already and it can really help foster that conversation. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and mark that one. Um, move down to the next one if I can. All right, so the next question is, Suggestions on how to make your first approach, in particular, if you don't have a connection. So Steffi, do you want to take that one? How do you reach out to them first? Yeah, definitely like an email or stop by their business if you can during a, a downtime or, um, and then follow up with a phone call. Like, did you get my email? Um, sometimes you, you get the gatekeepers, so that can be hard to get through, but sometimes with the gatekeepers, you just don't tell them what it's about. You just say, you know, I sent an email, just want to follow up and make sure that they received it. Um, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, getting through to them was easier when you say you actually have a meeting with the congressman, <laughs> then yeah. you get through to a lot more businesses. Cause then they're like, what? Oh, okay. And I'm, yeah, I'm calling to see if, you know, the owner would want to get involved with that. That's a great idea. That is terrific. I think we have time for one more question before closing. So I'm going to read this one to you, Alex, and have you field this one. It says, I think the EU border carbon adjustment mechanism will be very influential for businesses that export goods. Any tips for how to find out which businesses in my community export to Europe? 
Yeah, go on the web and Google your state and find out if there's a, um, you know, a business outlook or just Google your state and importing, exporting. And, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get some hits. You'll, you can yeah. look them up. Um, I don't know. You'll find top one. industries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. You'll find top industries and you'll be able to figure out if there are companies in your state that fill that are part of those industries. And that'll help inform that decision. Steffi, do you have anything else uh, to add to that? No. Mm -mm. And I do see a question in here from someone about how you find out if someone's working on a business endorsement. The GET, the Grass Tops Engagement Tracker in community is a, right. a good resource for that. But keeping your own spreadsheet for your chapter is very helpful as well. Yeah. And I know there's some question out there about the GET. The GET is still... You can still use it as a resource. It's just edit, not the editable function is what is down, but that gets updated periodically. So um, th that is still a good resource for everybody. So I believe um, we are right up on time here. Um, so I just want to uh, thank everybody for coming today. I want to thank um, Steffi and Alex for sharing their wonderful work and insight. Um, I, I reiterate myself here, CCL could not do it without you and the work that you're doing and the pro support you're providing to other volunteers. Um, so thank you so much for what you're doing and for being here with us today. Um, and also thank you to all of our attendees. We really hope, I, I think I speak for Steffi and Alex, we really hope that this was helpful and informative um, and we're all here to accomplish a shared goal and um, you know, we'll do it together. So thank you for your time. And um, please feel free to reach out to me if you ever have any questions or I can be a resource as well. Thank you. Thank all. you. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.